Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review, this time of another Backman locomotive, I'm not even sure if that's the right word, but trust me, you're not going to believe this one. <laughs> So today's model, I think model is a safer term, is one from America. I actually had to order this from an American retailer and have it shipped all the way over here into the UK because I couldn't find one. It is this. Now you might think, why has he bought an HO scale bus to review? Isn't that scraping the bottom of the barrel? Well, it might be scraping the bottom of the barrel, but this thing does not run on roads, although I guess maybe it would. It actually runs on rails, which is unbelievable. Now, I just thought to start with, this must be something that Backman have just conjured up out of their imaginations. I've never seen a bus like this on rails. Apparently not though, apparently high rail vehicles really did exist. <laughs> I've never seen one, so I don't know how common they are, but they are out there apparently. And this is one of those, it is motorized, I believe. Now, I bought this from a retailer from Wolfers. I think that's the way you say it. I should have looked up how to pronounce it, but uh, yeah, Wolfers, I think it is. The product has an RRP of $79 on Backman's website, which is around £63, something like that. Mine cost me around $50, I think. I've got a piece, there's too many numbers, too many numbers to store in my tiny mind. Yeah, it was $49.48 from Walther's, which is about £40 in UK pounds, but it ended up costing me £62, because obviously there was quite a lot of postage involved. So I have, I don't know what my expectations are for this thing but I'm very interested to find out what this is like. So come with me, let's get it out and find out together. So the packaging looks pretty cool. You can see the bus through the front of it there. It's actually quite a bit larger than I was expecting when I was looking at the listings online. I imagined when I saw it to be an HO scale bus, I imagined it being really tiny, but no, it's quite sizable actually, which is pretty cool. It says on the edge of the box here, Backman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Uh, yes, uh, based on the comments from some of my American viewers, I don't think anyone is going to be convinced by that statement, yeah. Okay, let me show you the end of the box then. So, this is item number 46215. It's an HO bus with high railers, and it is white, as you can tell. And I think there's like a yellow school bus type version as well. I don't know whether it actually is a school bus, but it looks like one. Okay, well, for the first time then, all the way from America, let's open this box and find out what this thing is like. I just can't believe that this exists, but it is pretty cool. So props to Backman for actually creating something like this, I suppose. All right, so we have an insane amount of paperwork here. I mean, this is probably the thickest wadge of paperwork I've ever had from a model locomotive of any kind. Okay, so what's this first thing then? I'm gonna enjoy this. Okay, so this is what you have to fill in and send off within 10 days of the purchase in order to activate the warranty. Well, I can throw that away because it's been more than 10 days. Whoopsie daisy, never mind. I mean, come on, Backman's products don't need warranties. They last forever, don't they? Okay, here we go, here we go. Bus with high railers. This is the interesting part. It says instructions, right? Lubrication and maintenance. Proper lubrication is important, but it must not be overdone. Blimey, sorry, I, I, I didn't even go near my oil pen there, don't worry. Okay, yeah, all of that. Break-in period, um, there's actually nothing written on the break-in period, like any frequent, okay. <laughs> well, that's a bit less forceful, isn't it? Is that less important? Troubleshooting tips, if you're local, oh, they call it a locomotive, doesn't run, check the following. The power pack is plugged in, ah, I'm sure most wouldn't think of that. Check that the track is wired properly, yes, your track must be wired, that's true. And make sure all locomotive wheels are on the track, yes. Mm. Well, I'm glad that you included that back then, I don't think I would have thought of those. Uh, but the headlight glows, you may have your track connected to the DC terminals on the power pack. Oh yes, because you can't use DC to run model trains, you know that. I mean, that must be an error, mustn't it? They must mean AC. So uh, yes, lots of attention to detail in instructions. But you know what, this is getting all a bit cynical, isn't it? <laughs> Let's put that to one side. Sorry, folks, I got carried away there. A lifetime limited warranty. Oof. Seems to be quite a lot of paperwork for the lifetime limited warranty. All right, well, we won't go into that, we won't go into that. Anyway, let's get the bus out and see what this thing's like. Might I need, yeah, I'm gonna need Rusty, hang on. Right. Those instructions, <laughs> they are more amusing than the back and branch line instructions, I think. Right, okay, okay, that's done it. Right, let's see what this is like then. How is this going to work? Okay, look at that. Ooh. 
look at those. So you've got the high railer wheels, I'm guessing that's what they're called. They sort of flop around, which is quite cool. I mean, in real life, I think those would raise and lower. I think the confusing thing about this is that the other wheels, the sort of rubber wheels in real life, have flanges on them. I could be wrong, because like I say, I've never seen one of these vehicles, but I don't think they would be flanged in real life. I think it's those little floppy wheels that would actually hold the thing on the track when it's on track, and the other wheels would just have the rubber tyres used for propulsion, but we'll talk more about that later on. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, we have both of the big wheels driven, as you can see, with a series of gears there. Quite a lot of gearing with this. Yes, I suppose that's because it's a centrally mounted motor and there's a big gap between the wheels. Well, this is very, very interesting indeed. We will take a close look at this in a moment and at some of the details. But first of all, here's some of the information I've been able to find about the high railers. So I would assume that the term high railer comes from the fact that these vehicles would run on the road, the highway, as I called in the States, of course, and a railway as well. So that's where the rail park comes from. Many of these vehicles started off as road vehicles, apparently, and they were converted for use on rail as well by means of additional rail wheels that can be raised and lowered. So this may actually mean that the high railers are an actual real life example of traction tyres on real railways, as the rubber road wheels would often be used for the propulsion, even on the rail. So there are several applications for these vehicles, you might be wondering why on earth such things exist. I think the main thing is for railway maintenance and building, so they allow personnel and tools I guess to be easily transported to work sites. Besides that I'm not entirely sure what they'd be used for. There is some evidence that attempts to use buses like this for general passenger use have been made but without very much success. Apparently there are some safety concerns over these designs as well, I mean just looking at a bus like this you can easily imagine what those might be um, uneven wear on those road tyres used on rails, are the locking systems for the raising and lowering of the rail wheels reliable, how do those extra wheels affect performance when they're used normally on the road, yeah I mean there might be a reason why I've not seen one of these before, uh, it doesn't seem like there are many of these vehicles around but have you ever seen one, let me know down in the comments. All right, so it's not ideal that I'm filming a white object on a white background. Yes, I know, hold the comments back. Um, but here it is up close and personal. Now, as you can probably tell, this is not a very well detailed model to the point where I would be inclined to call this a toy. However, the box is very, very clear that this is not intended for children. And just in case you were considering giving this to a child, it also says that it contains lead and it may generate dust containing lead keep out of reach of children. Um, why in this day and age are we still seeing products with lead in them, Backman? I know you say this is not for children, but come on, it looks like a toy bus. When these end up in charity shops or secondhand stores or something like that, this is gonna be attractive to children, come on. There's no need for lead in objects these days. People, when I say this, often say it's the solder. I thought they had to use lead-free solder in industry these days. Please do let me know if I'm wrong. But yeah, I don't really understand this model. I mean, it wasn't that cheap, so it's not just a bit of a novelty. This cost me over £60, and yet it's not particularly detailed. So, I mean, the decoration, as you can tell by the fact that it literally blends into the background here, is very, very basic. I mean, around the back, you've got these big red blobs, which look like a breakout of measles or something. Maybe they're supposed to be lights. I'm not entirely sure. Although on the front, we do actually have some sort of transparent acrylic fitted where the lights would be there, so maybe they're not lights. We have this separately fitted sort of grill radiator type thing at the front there, and then these very comical looking windscreen wipers, which have just been sort of painted straight onto the glazing there. Uh, the interior is completely non-existent. There's no interior detail whatsoever. But as you can see, the molded detail is pretty cool. We've got the nice sort of corrugated metal effect on the side and a little bit of molded detail on the top. But congrats, folks. If you've watched this far, you've seen all the detail on the loco. A loco. I don't know why I keep calling it a loco. But yeah, that is literally it. I have to say, though, this, there's something very, very intriguing about this. I mean, just seeing these little extra wheels. I mean, I just thought when I saw the pictures of this online, I thought, well, they just must be to help the thing run. I didn't consider that in real life there were vehicles that looked like this. So 
from that point of view, this model has taught me something new and I have found it interesting for that reason. But besides that, yeah, it's not a toy, it's not a model. What is it? I have no idea whatsoever. Maybe it will be a great performer though. That will be interesting to see. So I think first things first, I'm gonna try and take the body off and see what sort of mechanism we're sporting in this. Looking at the paperwork, I didn't show you the exploder diagram actually, I forgot to show that. Uh, but the mechanism looks pretty interesting. So I will show you that and then we'll get it on the track. And I just can't wait to see this crazy looking white bus, very back heavy white bus uh, running on my railway. Not something I ever expected to see, but maybe we're about to see it. Should be fun. Okay, so the body came off. There was just one screw holding it on back there. And this is basically what the interior of the bus looks like because there is no seating or anything. So if you look inside, this is what you see. Now it does have pickups. You can, you might be able to see there that there are wire pickups, sorry, wiper pickups going to the wheels, but it does look like it's split chassis. You can see a sort of big split and there are plastic insulators between the two halves of the chassis. I suppose the way to find out would be to put power across it. Let's try. Either I'm wrong or my battery's dead, it doesn't matter too much. The other interesting thing is that the high railer wheels, the little tiny wheels, are actually connected to the model via the driving axles, which means that maybe those little wheels also help with the picking up. That would be interesting to find out. Uh, I'm curious now to find out whether my battery's dead, the loco's dead, or whether it's not split chassis. All right. Okay, no, so it does actually work when you put the battery to the wheels. Do the little wheels work? Yes, they do actually, so I guess I was right about that. So either it's not split chassis or it's got this sort of lacquer on it, which uh, stops it conducting. And if I pop the plastic base off, you can see that yes, it is split chassis. Um, as you can see, the terminals of the motor there appear to just be soldered directly to the two halves of the chassis and there's no wires or anything. Um, no proper bearings for the wheel set. I'm not too surprised about that for obvious reasons. And yeah, as you can see, it is quite nicely designed though. I mean, it's very neat and tidy, isn't it? Quite like it as far as it goes. Either way, the mechanism looks really simple. You've got the centrally mounted motor. You can just about see the worm drives through the gaps in the chassis. Yep, you can see those. And they just go straight to the gear set. Three gears. I uh, don't think there's any reduction in the gears. The reduction happens just on the worm drive and the first gear. It looks like, so if I flip it over, you can see that the rest of the gears appear to be the same size. So, yep, yeah, it's very, 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 very simple. But how does it run? Let's find out. Okay, so it's not a very convincing model. By its own admission, it could also be a poisonous model, but is it a model that runs well? Let's find out. So it went back together nice and easily, and as you can see, it's on the track now for the first time. Let's see if this thing can crawl. The mechanism looks all right. I mean, there's nothing to shout about, but it looks good. Oh, there we go. That's not bad, that's not a bad crawl. The thing I'm interested in is seeing whether this can actually handle curves. I mean, gradient should be okay. Do those little roller wheels cause problems on curves and such? I'd be interested to know. Actually though, performance is pretty nice. That's not bad. How does it get on over the express points? It's over the dead zone now. Yeah, I mean, continuity with the rails gets a tick. That works really, really well. All right, 50% speed. I'll tell you what, it doesn't, I don't think it has any lights or anything. No, it doesn't have a lot going for it, bless it but it does look super cool. I mean, when you started in this hobby, did you ever expect to see this? <laughs> a bus on wheels going on a model railway. There is just something very entertaining about that, isn't there? So, I mean, for entertainment factor, the value for money is spot on. I would, I'm happy that I paid 65 pounds for this. If you don't find a, a small white bus mounted on rails running along amusing, then obviously it's not worth the money because as a model, it doesn't really succeed because it's so basic. But yeah, I mean, mechanically speaking, it's okay. And performance wise, that looks really, really good. But like I say, my biggest question is, how does this handle curves? Is it going to derail? Is it going to work? I have high hopes having seen the performance now, but let's get it running and try. So let's back it up. Let's take a run up. Here we go. I'm going to set it to 50% speed and send it off around the track for the first time. Here we go. All right, folks, I think I'm sold. I bought it as a joke. I've laughed at it. I've pointed fingers and chuckled at it. But I have to admit, I'm enjoying this now. It works absolutely perfectly. It's handling the layout absolutely fine. It's not derailing. What an amusing piece of whatever it is this really is. <laughs> I can't help but enjoy it. And it's something that <laughs> very few people have seen before. 
And for that, I'll have to thoroughly enjoy it. That is very, very amusing. All right, folks, I am back. And I've got to say, I mean, I'm not entirely sure whether I can recommend this because, as I say, it cost me quite a lot. It is so basic and, I mean, it's not really going to fit on many people's layouts, really, is it? But it works so well and I can't deny that I really have just enjoyed seeing this thing run. Um, maybe I'll have a completely different sense of humour to the rest of you normal human beings. But yeah, this just really um, tickles me in a way, uh, which is a strange thing to say, I know. Anyway, <laughs> moving swiftly on, let's see how the crawl is. How important the crawl is, I don't know, but obviously if this was a model, which I don't think it is, it would need to do a good crawl because obviously in real life these road vehicles can do that. Um, all right, well, it twitched. Let's keep going. Okay, so I mean, that's about as slow as it can go. And for a model, which isn't really, I don't know why I, don't know why I keep calling it a model. It's not really a model, but for whatever this is, that is not too bad, is it? It is good and smooth. I mean, it's not going ultra slow any lower, as you can see, it just cuts out. The performance isn't astonishing, but actually I think it's much better than I was expecting it to be. And if you get it at that sort of speed, it's fine. Um, have those wheels suffered at all, having run around for about 40 minutes? Are they still picking up as well? Let's see, over the dead zone. Seems fine. So, yeah, performance gets a big tick from me. So I'm going to send this back off, I don't think there's much more to say, and I'll show you some of the other novelties I have running today for you. So, see which other novelty slash curiosity locos you can spot on the layout. I will show you a couple. Here's one that I haven't showed very much over recent years. It is the Gandhi Dancer. The reason being, I presumed it was dead. It went up in smoke a few years ago, and I've just never run it since. Recently, though, I decided I would strip it down entirely, and I mean seriously strip it down entirely. The motor as well, took the brushes out, the springs out, cleaned the commutator, cleaned everything, fresh lubricant, etc, etc, because I really wanted to see if I could get this to work. I even added a capacitor on here to try and reduce the amount of arcing on the commutator. I do believe that the motor is spent, but it does now work. Now, it goes for about 30 seconds, perhaps, and then starts to arc and smoke. So it's not a pretty sight, and it's certainly not something I would run very often. But because people have asked for it, and because I haven't been able to do it for a few years, here is proof that the Backman Gandhi dancers do work. <laughs> I don't know how long it's going to work for today. Maybe I'll just keep running it until it pops. Hang on, it's good. Maybe that's it. Nope, nope. As you can see, that's not too bad, is it? All right, folks, I think that's your lot. That's as far as it got. It's probably about a foot in real life. Let's give it another nudge, though. Oops. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, look, you can see the arcing. You see that? It's almost on fire. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was dead for years, so I'm not losing out by doing this. Oh, there's the smoke. You see that? <laughs> like I said, oh yeah, there's a big plume of smoke there. You see it? Maybe. Yeah, I bet you can see it. Go on, let's cook it. Mmm. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's burning up, folks. It looks like there's an LED in there, but there isn't. <laughs> oh, it's cooking big time. Oh, oh, whoa. Thought we were going to get some more movement. Oh, and there you go. Would you believe it? How does that happen? It's on fire one minute, running better than it was the next. Maybe that's the kick in the head it needed. <laughs> what the devil? I don't understand that. Look at that. Perfect. I'm not going to leave it running, though, because I'd like to have it see another day if possible, but... There we go, that's not bad, is it? There have actually been many occasions I've watched that Gandhi dancer cook like that. Each time I thought it was spent, each time it comes back to life somehow. I don't know how. Let's watch it do a whole lap, though, if it will. Oh. Are we dead? Has it just cut out? Hang on, let's check the focus. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, nope, still going. Don't worry, bus. We'll put the attention back on you in a minute. There we go. Please don't stop there, Gandhi Dancer, because it's difficult to get to it there. But yeah, it's another entertaining piece. Two twitching men on a hand car. I mean, you've got to love it, haven't you? But there we go. I think I'll quit that now.
And then on the inside line, I have a way, way, way better vehicle from Backman. I mean, this is what the bus should have been, I think, if it was going to be a proper model. I mean, it should have had this level of detail. It shouldn't have been a Wickham trolley. That wouldn't make sense. But yeah, I mean, they did this right. The level of detail is phenomenal. I serviced this recently. The mechanism is really competent as well. Proper bearings on the wheel set as well. Absolutely wonderful. Uh, yeah, I mean, that is a model. That is a model. It's detailed. It's really well designed. This, I'm not sure what this is. Um, your guess is literally as good as mine. Anyway, let's keep going. So my community tab poll question for today is going to be, would you buy one of these? If I met you and said for £62 you can have this brand new, <laughs> would you say yes or no? That's the question. You could argue that it does exactly what it's supposed to do in bringing enjoyment. I mean, that's the purpose of every model really. It doesn't do that by means of massive detail like some models do, but in its own way, it still does that. So maybe I'm being unduly harsh, but obviously the whole tone of this video is a little bit tongue in cheek. I mean, don't take this too seriously because I'm certainly not. Okay, so let's take a look at some of my ratings then. So on the subject of detail, I'm not sure what this is supposed to be, but I don't think it's supposed to be a model because the level of detail is really, really, really low. Very, very few separately fitted parts. The decoration, incredibly basic, no interior whatsoever. So I've given it 1.5 just out of generosity, really. The performance though is actually really good. I've given it three and a half. I was close to giving it four, although obviously some of the ultra premium models do sort of knock the socks off it. So I think four would be a bit much. Yeah, generally it's nice and smooth. It doesn't derail. It doesn't do anything wrong really. The slow speed isn't very good. So I mean, it's not that realistic. I mean, you'd expect a road vehicle to be able to go pretty slow. I mean, they can creep forwards in real life. How important that is obviously is quite questionable given the nature of this object. But yeah, the performance is all right, it has to be said. Pulling power, again, completely irrelevant, but I did manage to get a bit of a reading off this. 11 coaches, uh, 0.12 newtons, so it is what it is. It's not going to be pulling anything anyway, so I don't know why I'm still talking about this, but if you're interested, there it is. The mechanism is okay. I mean, there's nothing special about it. I've knocked a star off because it doesn't have the proper metal bearings. I don't know whether it has a three or five pole motor. I would guess three, but I can't penalize it because I don't know for sure without taking the thing apart. Besides Besides that though, I mean all the wheels pick up, it's reasonably competent, the weight's not terrible, it weighs about 100 grams, but you have got quite a nice metal chassis as well, so I mean I can't really fault the mechanism too much. The quality likewise isn't too bad at all, I mean it is quite a plasticky model where the body's concerned, but the build quality itself, I can't find any defects with it, it works as it should, it looks as it should. I mean, yeah, what can I say really? So I've given it four star, perhaps a slightly better quality mechanism maybe, but overall no complaints with the quality. The value for money, I've given just three star sort of middle of the road. I mean, it's not bad, it's functional for what it costs, but I don't know how many people are gonna want to spend 62 pounds, I mean, that's what I spent, or uh, let's see, $79, that's the RRP. I'm not sure if I can recommend spending that kind of money on something that just gives you five, 10 minutes of entertainment. I think you can spend that money elsewhere and have a little bit more long lasting fun. I'm sure you can think of several ways in order to do that. But yeah, overall, that's not too bad. It has an overall score of 6.47 out of 10. Yeah, obviously that's kind of critical. I think the biggest issue with this product is kind of identity. I mean, what is it? It's not a model because it's far too basic. It's not a toy because it's potentially poisonous to children and adults for that matter. And it's not really a novelty because it's far too expensive. If I was going to pick one of the three to label this, maybe I would say it's a novelty because after the really high price of entry, it is a lot of fun. Like I say though, I don't know how long that fun and novelty will last, but it is what it is. It's quite a lot of fun and I don't know why I'm trying to get all intellectual about this because it's a bus that works on your model railway. <laughs> and so logbook, as you can see, 35th, just below the Mahano TUV and above the standard class four tank. So there you are folks, I think I've basically said all I can possibly say about this. Let me know in the comments, what do you think? Does it do it for you? Is it just irritating to you? Would you never spend that kind of money on something like this? Whatever the case may be, I'd love to hear it, so please do let me know. Hope you enjoyed the video, it was a little bit of a laugh if nothing else, so hopefully you appreciated it for that. And I will see you very soon with some more reviews of models that are perhaps a little bit more serious. So I'll see you very soon for those. Thanks for watching, take care.